Hello everyone, welcome back to Arts and Robotics, my name is Carl, and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at building the Cybot from Real Robots. Now back when I was a kid, this robot got me into robotics and electronics. It was a bi-monthly magazine where you uh, basically, every two weeks you bought a new issue. In that issue there was a new component and all the instructions inside the magazine on how to build it. Um, Years and years went by uh, since, you know, losing my last one when I was a kid. And then eventually I was, you know, watching eBay to see if any came up. There was a lot on eBay, but a lot of them are uh, you know, very, very expensive prices. This one came up for very, very cheap. And luckily for me, the seller sent me two. He sent me two set chassis, uh, two lots of boards and two lots of issues. Um, the only one issue I don't have is the UC2 board. The UC2 board is the board that connects the, uh, the mode board up until the, the regular processor and the motor controller. So we can only actually use one at a time. But never mind, um, let's see how we got to this point. So this is how I got them in the packet, the, uh, the two chassis. One was already built up and one needed building up. Uh, I stripped them down to see the exact condition of all the electronics and as you can see inside the battery hatch here, the batteries have actually been left in. Um, they must have been in there for well over 10 years because everything was completely corroded away. The 9 volt battery, that had also been left plugged in, that was completely corroded away. Uh, but we've also got a brand new power pack to sort that so it's no problem. This was the F1 racing kit that's also included with my package and the infrared controller. Uh, I have all the components to build that up and also the headset com components to build up headset. So the first job was to isolate the three main boards that I needed, including the processor, the main UC2 board, and the motor controller, so that I could build Cybot's brain. I wasn't sure of the condition of the board, so straight away I wore some um, gloves, just to make sure that I didn't transfer any static to the boards. But after seeing the condition that they were in, and you know remembering that these things were built by kids, I probably didn't need the gloves, so that was just an oversight by my seeing. The, uh, the actual condition of the robot was pretty good after I give it a wipe over with some alcohol wipes and that had evaporated away. It was just mostly dust and a little bit of the corroded batteries, you know, the silicone that came from the corroded batteries. This was the brain when I'd fully built it up and the uh, front panels with the sonar and the light sensors. All that white gunk you can see on the front there is hot glue. Um, the little dome on the top is very, very notorious for breaking off. Um, I tried gluing up the little tabs that break off every single time, but as soon as you try and add a little bit of pressure to it, they just break off. So I just stuck that dome holder on with a bit of hot glue because I'd lost my wit's end with it. So now we're putting on the uh, side panels and now time for the glamour shots. So this was Atlas mode one, object avoid mode. It worked pretty well. Um, I'd still need to find some instructions online because there is two potentiometers on each side of the board. And I remember when I built this as a kid, they are very important and they do something, but I don't know what they do. So I need to find the instructions online so I can find out exactly what position those potentiometers need to be in for each individual mode. Um, some of the modes, work they work fine, but they don't work. Uh, completely um, as they should like uh, object follow mode uh, you can only follow things that are like literally centimeters in front of the sonar and I remember when I was a kid you could literally get the thing to walk you know if you're in a clear room you could get the thing to walk and chase after you no problem so I just need to change the potentiometers and find out what they do this was Atlas in light follow mode absolutely worked flawlessly uh, there's only two little sensors which show the light, one on the right, one on the left, and there you go. If the light's on the left, it'll go left. If the light's on the right, it'll go to the right. This is the line follow mode. This worked absolutely fine. Um, Atlas line follow mode worked fine, but Star Fox's line follow mode didn't work, all down to the new uh, upgraded power section. Um, this is the little clip that you change the modes by. It's just four little switches, and it gives you 16 different variations. So that's working no problem at all. The 
What's he gonna do? No. Oh. Star Fox has got stuck. What are you gonna do, Star Fox? Make a decision. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Make a decision. Go on, Star Fox! And you might be seeing inside of here, Star Fox's uh, power distribution is a lot different to uh, Atlas's power distribution. And that's because Atlas runs on four double A's here and one nine volt battery at the back. But as I shown you, uh, on one of these, one of the battery bays was completely corroded. But luckily inside the packet, there was the upgraded power pack, which uh, runs off four, uh, sorry, eight double A's and no nine volt battery. So you wire that it gets the nine volt from this power distribution board here. So uh, let's pop this back together and pop some eight double A batteries in there. No nine volt battery and see what we can get from Star Fox. Now we're going to test the light follow mode. So let's see if it follows the... Uh, tripod camera light yes it does it follows the tripod camera light no problem at all and now it's actually going towards the light stop there we go or oh, ultrasonic it's not actually so much ultrasonic there we go so follow me mode does work so i need to change the uh, potentiometers Obviously those potentiometers change how, uh, you know, how twitchy everything is. So uh, I'll need to see if I can find some instructions online and uh, get working on that. Thank you very, very much for joining us here at RC Robotics. This definitely isn't going to be the last video on Cybot, on uh, Atlas or Star Fox. Um, we also have the controller, the infrared controller right here to uh, complete. So I need to complete building that. There's a whole load of issues I haven't even opened yet of the magazine. So yeah, um, I'll be back with another video on Cybot once the infrared uh, controller is sorted. Then I think what we're gonna do is, is try and play a game of football and uh, see if we can navigate one of these Cybots through a very, very tight course using just FPV and the infrared camera, or, or should I say the infrared uh, controller. So yeah, thank you very much for joining us today, guys. Uh, if you like this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It is just up there in the corner. And if you like to see any more of my videos, I'll pop one down here and another just down here. Thank you again, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.